Support for Living and Learning with Disabilities comes from Living Innovations, providing support for people with developmental disabilities to have a good life at home and in the community. Services include community connections, which facilitates employment, skill development, and community integration to maximize each individual's well-being and independence. For more information or to learn about job opportunities for compassionate people wishing to do meaningful work, visit livinginnovations.com. And by the Natural Care Wellness Center, which has been serving the New Hampshire and Maine Seacoast for 22 years. Our goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle through education, wellness choices, and hands-on healing. Natural Care Wellness Center offers gentle force chiropractic, family and child wellness, chiropractic acupuncture, holistic nutrition, nutrition response testing, a decompression table, therapeutic exercise, whole food supplements, neuroemotional techniques, and massage therapy. Sometimes we miss all those wonderful qualities that we just listed in that last song because we decide who people are before we even get to know them based on maybe what they look like, how they talk, what kind of clothes they're wearing, what kind of music they like, whatever. We decide who they are before we ever get to know who they really are inside. And it happens to us too. Sometimes people decide who we are before they know us. I think all we really want is just for, for people to see us for who we really are. See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful each and every day Could you take a chance? Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful? See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful each and every day Could you take a chance? you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful. Thank you. Alison Decker. So good to see everybody, uh, my friends, um, um, and to see you, Craig. I mean, we're as I was saying, we were going over what we were going to talk about on the show beforehand, and uh, 
just to honor you for uh, all the years that you've contributed to, uh, well, now it's living and learning with disabilities. I don't know if I can even say the name of the old old show without uh, <laughs> coming down the pike. <laughs> mm. uh, that's why we, if you're familiar with the show, why we've had to change the title. Somebody else has the uh, copyright on that. So eh, a minor blip in the road, a rose by any other name is still a rose. You bet. Uh, and uh, yeah, that would be, my, I would just think in my dream concert uh, would be to have both Red and Craig uh, together on the same stage. Mm. I would love that. Yeah. It's a beautiful song. Friend, yeah. Oh, isn't it? It just, mm. you would think you'd get tired of it. I've been listening mm. to it for, what is it, 11 years, guys? And mm. I just never get tired of it. Yeah. Um, well, uh, my friend, uh, we appreciate your coming and uh, interrupting your busy life because you wear so many hats. I mean, besides the physical hat you're wearing, you are. Thank you. One of my favorites. Yes. Uh, <laughs> give the, give the, I want people to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what happens when, when people see me like, when people see me with this all the time when I'm walking around like this they they think I'm another person and no there's no recognition you know so so now this is me and this is still rose by any other hat yeah yeah you're yeah. beautiful either way thank yeah. you That's thank right. you <clears throat> so uh, just we just wanted to check in with you Craig and, and uh, See how life has changed during these unusual times. Mm -hmm. um, what's 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 uh, a challenge, and what's uh, an actually a rare advantage of these times? You know? Well, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have much to say. There's really nothing different at all in these days. So, we really no, no I'm just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're aware of the crisis out there. I, I shouldn't. I, mean, I shouldn't start off. I apologize, audience. I thought Craig is more with it. You know, it could be an. Yeah, I'm sorry. Here. No, I shouldn't so, start off with sarcasm. No, 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 it's, it's okay, buddy. It's all right. Uh, yeah. Well, laughing is always better than crying. Yeah, I'm almost overwhelmed trying to think about where to start with the question. Mm. There are. Um, well. We have this, you know, here we are gathered, uh, striving to be present with each other, through, you know, looking at various pieces of, I'm, I'm looking at a little, trying to remember, I, I have a computer screen, I have a little black rectangle, which is where you really are. If I look in the lens, you know, I'm actually looking at your, it, to your eyes. But um, yeah, there's a lot of, I have a microphone, I'm wires everywhere to just to have this meeting with you. Um, so we've got all that going on, right? For the, for those who have access to it, mm -hmm. so so that's one thing. We have we have all of we who are connecting this way who have the opportunity to, the the means to, the privilege to, right? And then there are all those who who don't. Um, so that's a, that's a change. Um, I would be remiss in asking you, uh, yeah. as uh, the health of your family, uh, are they okay? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, my, uh, I, I'm, I cohabitate with my wife of a zillion years, my best pal Liz, and um, she, uh, she tested positive for COVID some uh, about uh, oh, a month and a half ago, and and had went through quarantine. Thank, thank everything. She didn't get uh, symptoms. So, and then I was quarantined because of that. And I contacted her. <clears throat> I did not develop any symptoms or uh, COVID to, to my knowledge, but I, but I stayed quarantined and, um, and we're, you know, <clears throat> compared to so much of the world, we're, we're among the most fortunate. So very grateful mm -hmm. for that. Our family, uh, our son and his family, our little granddaughter, they're all hanging in there and doing well. They have to get tested too. What's that? Because, because of yeah, yeah, they did. They everybody, have... everybody yeah. did the whole mm -hmm. circle. One thing I, if I may just quickly say, I was happy with our experience with our state in New Hampshire was very positive. There was a, a daily check-in from the state. It was um, it was compassionate and and uh, informative each time. And so every anyway, we were our experience with the processes that were put in place were, was very positive. Yeah. Wendy, uh, Wendy, I don't know if you know, she's recently elected to the legislature over there in uh, New Hampshire. My second term. Oh wow! Thank, thank you for your service. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's I really... enjoy it tremendously. 
You like want so. to speak to this briefly, uh, Wendy, about what what do you think is New State of New Hampshire's got this right uh, that Craig is referring? Yeah. I have to say I I um, have been impressed. I haven't really heard any a lot of negativity. Of course, you're always going to have both sides to a conversation. Um, one thing that I think of most is just not having the the mandated mask mandated mask mandate. You know, to have the governor say we do need to wear masks. I think people are um, doing what they need to do. We've all seem to have caught on and learned that we are being safe for ourselves. We're being protective of others. Um, I noticed most establishments have really pulled that up and said, you know, no mask, no service, basically just like <laughs> no shoes, no shirt. Is that right? No shirt, um, no shoes, no shirt, no mask. There yeah. you go. You know, but um, honestly, <clears throat> I really see the the state as a whole rallying together, taking care, keeping great communication. You know, we we get updates from a lot of the uh, nonprofits and a lot of the medical facilities in our emails to let us know what is going on and if there are any issues. And so far, I think we have been a pretty smooth sailing state mm -hmm. and people have really been responding well mm -hmm. of course we're going to have our cases but all in all um other than my my pet peeve is the mandatory mask mandate other than that I'm, I'm, i think the governor's done a very nice job with this a good job keeping yeah. on top okay yeah I mean, um, I guess our minds out of fear go to what's negative all the time, Craig, you know, uh, but I mean, uh, the fact that by the very fact that by protecting ourselves by wearing masks, we're protecting others. Correct. Uh, and really, even more so, I think, even more so. Is so, yeah. Saying, is saying I, only, I not only care about my health and my family's health, but I care about you, a perfect stranger mm -hmm. I'd never met before. When I go into a store and I'm wearing a mask, I'm demonstrating really that the oneness of humanity, that we're all one here and right. your life is just as precious, even though I don't know you as my closest child or something like that. I, I agree that that's the, yes. that's the message that I feel anyway. So in the earlier days in our own state, I'd go into a grocery store and there would be some people walking around in open defiance and, Correct. um, both in their physical posture and their their distance, as well as the non-mask wearing, and I I see very little of that today. I'm not saying it's not happening for people of, of, at all, right. but in my experience, there are more people kind of getting that the mask on is 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 for other people's benefit. It's not just about how brave you are or what you believe or anything. It's just that it's respecting uh, the community and recognizing our role and protecting each other. I think anyway. No, I, I agree with you. I agree. I see yeah. that too. Very rarely do you see people now not wearing a mask and respect yeah. that of one another. Yeah. Very rarely. And when I do, I just stay away from them. I'm not going to create a problem. That's yeah. their choice. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not taking away freedom of choice by saying wear a mask. It's, it's to protect until the vaccine is available for all and, and we're, we feel safe and confident. So all of my, just related to my work, uh, every, everything I'm doing now, I have uh, multiple ways I'm employed slash engaged in the world. And it's all, uh, you know, the vast majority of it is virtual. It's it's via, yeah. so. Go work, one by yeah. one, what are you doing virtually? How are you keeping on with your mission? Um, yeah, well, I, I um, uh, let's see. Well, so I'll start with a well, Krempel Center. We had a, a fundraising breakfast virtually today. So, um, so I work there uh, teaching classes. Um, I have been for a number of years now, and uh, uh, almost five years total. And um, and that's all. You know, in March. I around... have to ask, how in the world can you do? What is it? How does a virtual egg eat taste? You know, how do you do your virtual? How does the virtual yeah, well, fundraising the, the, breakfast work? The hashtag was that before the show. Or yeah, like, yeah. Ah, what is he talking? The hashtag. About? The hashtag was uh, BYO bacon. Was the was the hashtag for the for the breakfast? So. Bring your own bacon. Wow. Yeah, it, 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 I hope it's successful. You know, because the I will say, that, and I know I'm I'm biased, right? Because I'm on the staff, but uh, I think 
The response of the staff and the interns and the volunteers has been astounding. Uh, so as soon as we closed doors for in March, um, in response to the pandemic, uh, programming went online, and it's 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 been remarkable, really. Uh, in and some there are, case, it's an advantage because I've seen some of those people when I used to take client there just struggle physically just to get out of the car and and you know into the place. You're, you know? you're right. There's there's an interesting there's these, that's some of the hidden gifts. I'm kind of finding some hidden gifts. So um, mm -hmm. on the one hand, all the people, as I mentioned up front, uh, the people who don't have access to the technology and the setup are excluded, right? <laughs> so there's not, there, there's an access challenge there for folks who might've been able to get physically to the center, but who don't have the internet, uh, the Wi-Fi and the equipment to connect. So, so I want to, I'm always trying to remember those people are there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are people who could not get to the center, uh, could not drive three hours, or don't have a bus even from three miles away. They don't have a way to get a ride to get to the center, right. or they have a physical um, limitations that make it uh, prohibitive for them to come to the center. And those people, many of them, have access to come to the, all the programming now. Sure. So they can, uh, and we have one of our dear members used to drive a four hour round trip from out by the Keene Way to come once a day because his parents said he thought it was so important for him to attend. Once a week? You meant now, once a week? Yeah, yeah sorry, w once a week, yeah, thank you. And now he's coming three days a week, uh, virtually from his home. Oh, you know? yeah. And he's, a, he's an amazing young man, so. Um, I, I think, I think uh, like Krempel's like a lot of uh, places and a lot of everything is going to have some kind of in-person and virtual in the future. That, that's, that's a good, realization that uh, has dawned on me in everything I'm doing. So I have the Kreppel Center, you know, now that we've given access to some people who did not have access to the physical space before when we were open, mm -hmm. it seems, and I'm, I'm not the one you know, doing the heavy lifting around planning how that's all going to work. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. I think we're realizing we need and want to keep serving those people as well as the people who physically come to to the center so how we do all that that's going to be really interesting um same so you know one of my other ways i'm uh occupied in the world is i'm a pastor of us a, a small but mighty church it's um nottingham community church in nottingham new hampshire and similarly in um in March, we went. We closed our doors to the sanctuary because it's not safe, and we will not reopen until, uh, you know, until we believe it's safe to do so mm -hmm. for our members and for any guests who want to come by. So all I'm our services. How motivated you to go beyond what you were doing uh, uh, and become a Unitarian minister? Where, where, what's that? Tell us about. Oh that. boy, let's yeah. How many hours do we have? We have several hours. Yeah, <laughs> I have, uh, we'll make it for you. We'll have yeah, an uh, hour show for you. Uh, let me just quickly uh, and, and interrupt me anytime. So, uh, if I go back, I, I was an educator for many, many years, working teaching mostly what? at the teaching at the what? University of University of New Hampshire. Teaching what? Oh, sorry, I was a uh, um, I was actually uh, an administrator and staff member at a learning center at the university. So helping students with all kinds of uh, study and academic issues. Um, and I did that for almost 20 years. Then I left and became, uh, there's a longer story to this, but I became a singer songwriter and, a, and an accompanist and traveled the world for five years. Sure. I left my UNH job to do that, starting at the age of 50. So, and then when I came off the road from that <laughs> is when I both uh, discovered Krempel Center, uh, in some, I did some workshops for them, and mm -hmm. and I went to chaplaincy school when I came off the road for that. What was going on inside that you wanted to go to chaplaincy chaplaincy school? Great. Yeah, you know what was going on inside was not. It, I'll tell you, it wasn't a career plan or, or an organized, uh, um, you know, methodical step by step anything. It was that I was lost. I I, I was, uh, you know, I had been this educator for, I thought it would be for my whole life, and I chose to leave that I was kind of running out of uh, the capacity to feel um, accomplished mm -hmm. and uh, that it was becoming less meaningful for me uh, the things I was doing I wasn't bringing my all to it so and then music was this amazing splash of a whole different opportunity traveled parts of the world and 
and express art that way. And then when I came off the road from that, uh, I was totally, I didn't have an identity. I didn't know who I was. I was not oh, getting back. I tried to get back in education and, uh, and I'm glad I didn't quite honestly, but people didn't, I had become this seasoned educator who got off the bus for five years, running around the planet and then wanted to get back on the bus again. And, you know, at, at the age that I was at at the time. And that was, it wasn't happening. You know, I was an oddity, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, and I didn't, so I didn't know, I really didn't know who I was, a little bit of an identity crisis, as people say, and just feeling lost, and my, I was without a mission, and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and a friend, a dear friend, Joanne Connolly, who is a leader of singing groups in Portsmouth, uh, Voices from the Heart, and mm -hmm. Contuti, I was with her for a number of years, and she asked me at lunch one day, have, I, have you thought of becoming a chaplain, because she knew me really well, oh. and I hadn't thought of becoming a chaplain, but as soon as she asked me, I knew it was something for me to check into. So mm -hmm. I did, okay. and uh, I learned right. enough about the school I went to was the Chaplaincy Institute of Maine in Portland, an amazing place. And um, that's where I gradually found my mission again, found, uh, <laughs> which wasn't so far apart from everything I'd done before, but I had a new way <clears> to <throat> see, that's, understand that's what, was, yeah. that's what yeah. I was gonna say. I, I just think, uh, I think yeah. that's what was you. You just put a name to it, chaplain, but I think that was always a part of you in your relationship to others. Because you care about people beyond what an average person would care about somebody. Well, I, you know, I was born, I, uh, the term I use these days anyway, I, I was born tenderhearted. I know, of course, we're all tenderhearted, right? But I tell you, mine was <laughs> excessively tender. And, and I also had empathy. Um, I, you I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like to be anybody else, of course, right? I don't know what the inside I, of your... Craig, like, how do you yeah. protect that tender heart? Uh, the answer is I, I don't well enough, if you know what, but that's, mm -hmm. but it's okay because, uh, because it's the tenderness that, that, uh, helps me connect with other people and, and, and kind of informs my empathy for other people. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I need to protect it enough to stay alive, you know, and to put one yeah. foot in front of the other. But, um, but I, um, if, if you saw one of my services, even the online services, I'm usually in the middle of singing some song or saying something, I start to cry a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it's okay. I don't want to do it excessively, not because I'm ashamed of it, but because I want to, I don't want it to interfere with my message. What makes to, you cry? Uh, uh, just, I don't, I'm not sure all that, Ron. I think um, some of it's, you know, uh, uh, feeling the pain of other people and, mm -hmm. um, and the mm -hmm. other parts of being a human being, you know, not knowing things, being afraid, being, vulnerable, being small in the universe. I don't, I don't know what all those ingredients are. Sometimes I don't know the source. I just Pamela, get, Pamela, you know. that's right up your alley, feeling the pain of other people. How do you deal with that? Do you have anything to say to Craig about that? Well, Craig, you know, I've been in the field for almost 30 years now, working with seven different populations, doing mm. grief work. And I always, in, in the beginning, when I started the private practice, I was not really protecting myself. Hmm. Um, so I took everything on. I took everything hmm. home. Uh, so then I decided, okay, I need clear boundaries here. Hmm. So I designed those clear boundaries. And so I can, you know, go home and, and be the person that I am at the home. Yes. Uh, and not taking it with me. So that really helped. Yeah, I, you know, I appreciate that. And thank you for giving me a chance also to explain. Yeah. I, I agree with you whole, wholeheartedly, whole tenderheartedly. I agree yes. with you. Um, and I do, like I, uh, with friendship and with my partnership at home and, um, and with music, which mm -hmm. is a great, uh, a tonic and a bomb for me, you know, um, yeah. at creativity is, is a great, uh, a great uh, healing force in my life and my work with other people is so, so though I'm not, I'm not, all those things keep me from, I'm not sitting weeping in the corner of my home all the time. You know, I still have enough. Uh, it's accessible to me, my, that tender heart. And um, take, take, take seriously what Pamela says that going forward in the future. Though. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's important. And I get out of balance. I definitely get out of balance at times. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, but I appreciate the reminder. Yeah. Uh, I want to tell, I want to, I want to play your new uh, video, your new song, which is apropos of the times we're living in. 
and I'll, I'll have you introduce that, but I want to just tell a story about Craig's creativity that I went to see him in Dover at uh, a little place where they had that, uh, that couple would have a little. Uh, oh, Red red and shorties. Red Red and and shorties. shorties. Yes. I I can't remember which one was red and which one was shorty. (laughs) Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and you said, look at this. Who says I'm senile? You know, I want my wife to hear this. My kids, my grandkids, you know. I'm afraid of what I said, Ronnie. Go ahead. (laughs) And and, uh, (laughs) you said on the way down to the concert tonight, I wrote a song and then in your head, cause I'm hoping like hell, you weren't strumming your guitar at 65 miles an hour on the highway. And no, then you no. proceeded to play the song and it was a good song. Now I find that that's gotta be aggravating for all singers and songwriters around the country. That you could write a really good song on the highway to a concert when you should be concentrating on what the songs that you already were gonna play that night. <laughs> I heard a should in there, Ronnie. I reject your should. Um, I, 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 actually, as I hear you say that back, it sounds a little braggy to me, that, that me talking about how quickly no, I wrote no, that song. that's the thing about it. You weren't bragging. It okay, was good. just you. It was you. You could do that. I'll tell you what. I also believe one part of my work at Krempel Center and elsewhere, workshops in different parts of the world at times, is to write songs with a, to facilitate the writing of songs by other people, oh, I love especially, it that. especially I love people that. who have never written a song. Sure. Yeah. Um, in fact, I did it live. Uh, what I just did a I just did a presentation recently. Oh yeah, with a bunch of leaders from across New England, and um, uh, one of their activities was we're going to write a song. Oh no, sorry, with chaplains, the chaplains. I did a uh, talk on spirituality um, and music, or music and spirituality. And one of the activities was we wrote a song instantly together. There were 30 of us on the screen and we wrote a song in about five minutes, not not even five minutes, because I wanted to show them what that looks like. And so I took their lines and their words and some somebody, I asked someone to give a couple melody words, lines and, and created the song. And then they broke into subgroups and they all were charged with writing a song in about 12 wow. minutes. And they all came back with these beautiful little, I mean, the beautiful little songs. So anyway, yes, I do. I constantly write songs and I love to help people see that they have the capacity to create beyond what they um, what they expect in themselves. You know, so. I'm just rem- reminded of a, in my head a, a line that I love uh, that music is a ladder to the soul. Hmm. Um, so um, yeah. we don't we want to get your video in. This is your new song. Uh, OK. You want can to I quick... this and then, uh, then I then will. John. Thank you. I... And John, you can speak up too. You know, you just don't have to be just good looking up there. You know, kid. <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> down with my the brother. Hat. My the brother. Hat. Keep the hat on at all yeah. times, John. <laughs> so this this song you're gonna. Um, I would love to introduce it because I need to honor the. This is a create a co-creation process. So, my uh, one of my dear friends, uh, one of my dearest friends, Allison Lupton. She's a friend of both Liz's and mine. I met her through music for many years. She's Canadian. She's in Ontario. And we co-write on occasion. And we've it's been said we haven't been able to visit. We haven't been able to go to each other's countries. Uh, but she called me up and said, um, will you write a, another song with me? And I said, OK. I was kind of busy. But I said, sure, sure, because I love her. And uh, and we over Zoom, we met three times. And she had a song idea, like what the subject matter might be about a flood uh, and it quickly became apparent to both of us that it was really metaphorical for what is happening for us in our lives these days. So in three Zoom sessions, uh, we wrote this song and a couple of tweaks in between sending back and forth email. And then um, she, because she's Allison and she's not Craig, she she got other musicians to support the song. She got a, um, Joe Phillips and uh, Mike Stevens to play harmonica. Joe Phillips played bass. She got Andrew Collins to put the audio together and make a video. Um, so then she said, okay, we wrote the song, Craig. Now, one more thing. I need you to make a video of you playing it. I said, okay, Alice, all right, another thing. And so I made the video. And then she took all those pieces and had this video produced of our song, uh, When Trouble Comes. 
And uh, there's a longer story to it, but I'll just let that be the introduction. So Alison Lupton and Craig Worth co-wrote this song. The river is rising, this dam won't hold Trouble comes, trouble comes Angry water, deep and cold Trouble comes Trouble come. Better get higher up the valley side. Find some shelter from this plight. Ice is melting, water too high. Trouble comes to us tonight. The sky is dark, the air is still. Trouble comes. Trouble comes Birds fly up Beyond the hill Trouble comes Trouble comes Better get higher Before the slide Find a hand And hold it tight Ground is shifting Better take flight Trouble comes To us tonight Directions, but no one knows. Trouble comes, trouble comes. The compass spins. Which way to go? Trouble comes, trouble comes. Better get higher than the noise down here. Rise above this tide of fear. Tender heart. No end in sight Trouble comes to us tonight Here we are in the same boat Row as one to stay afloat Bailing worry, pulling hard No charge for this, we search for stars When trouble comes When trouble comes, when trouble comes. We're back. We're back. That's. Greg, that was absolutely beautiful. Oh well, oh, well. Okay. Thank you. On behalf of the team, uh, I, 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 I appreciate that. Uh, the painting, the painting that you saw at the beginning, at the very end, is uh, an original painting by Ian Bell, also from Ontario, who, who, who created it just for this <clears throat> song. Um, so these, these are the details, right? You know, I'm the one on the TV program right now, so I, I get the praise and I accept 
uh, credit for my role. Uh, it's often we don't know how many people are involved in such a thing, right? Who, um, from a person who does a painting to the person who does all the mixing and mastering and made the video who you never see the face of, right? And uh, But anyway, it's good that I've created a, so much music as a solo artist, uh, you know, individual compositions and um, individual performances. It's a, t and that's, there's a lot of beauty in that and a connection with an audience that I feel often, well, there's, no, there's nothing better than the co-creation of, of a group of people who come together and build something together of beauty, you know, so I, I want to do more of the, this project in particular in these times uh, reminds me that I need to need and want to seek out that kind of collaboration with people. So, mm -hmm. who do you want to work with? Do you still do you have? Are there others out there? Do you can see yourself working with? Yeah, well, uh, there are many. I, I have so many among my friends that I would start there. You know, I have I have many musical friends who are also beautiful spirits, um, and uh, so yeah, there's a there's a giant list, but I don't. There's nobody I want to work with for um, at at least in my mind now, for any, um, uh, let's see, what am I saying? You know, that's like, like a famous person or something I'd like to collaborate with because it would be cool to collaborate with that person. I don't feel that now. Mostly I want to connect with, with dear hearts, you know, and, and put our minds and hearts together. And it's kind of a mingling of souls, really, when you, when you get beyond conversation and you mix something like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's beyond words, and it's a it's an intimacy to it that's just really powerful. So, Where and it's also it's like having a it's creating a new life. You know, it's almost like parenting something that's forever, right? There's no that's that's a forever. Th we have made that song, and that's a there's a union that comes from that that is permanent to me anyway. You know, yeah. and spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. What a concept! It's a song. It's like a new life. You know, the mm -hmm. collaboration between yourself mm. and others that you've created a new life mm. Mm. that goes on and uh, affects the lives of others what if yeah. what's the response you're getting from that song well it's i'll tell you it's it's lovely i and i know at first i was a little, just a little part part sheepish about this song because it's um you know i tend to like to uh do uplifting funny things or or really you know happier things and then my friend, my dear friend Larry Brickner Wood, who's another dear pastor friend, he's, he just said, "Hey, this is this is a beautiful song, and it's a lament. You know, it's kind of laments are really important for people to express their pain and their worry together. So, um, the, so the re the response has been beautiful among the people who've heard it. And I, this is a little on the boasty side, but it just um, it just made number two in um, in folk radio. Just this oh. just." Uh, they just wow. got that news like three days ago. So it's wow. across folk radio. It's the number two song being played by uh, folk DJs right now. So wow. that's that that's a beautiful Very thing. You know, that's uh, so, yeah, I guess I have to include that. I'm proud of it. But um, yeah, I'm glad. And that's a, again to to my friend Allison get stuff done. You know, I, I kind of I like to write things and create things and go, well, that's nice and move on to something else. And she she puts <laughs> things out there. Any other? What's your anything that you? What's your next thing? What what are you? What's next on your table there? Uh, I'm afraid to say that because I've talked about this for years now about my next album of so, collection of songs, but I think it's. I have a feeling it's going to happen, but I've said that uh, for probably eight years now. So what's the impediment? What's that? What is the oh, impediment? We don't have time for that one, Ronnie. That's a that's a lot. That's that would take a few sessions with Pamela uh, to sort out. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, Pamela I, is good, but uh, not that I good. Uh. I'll tell you, probably that's somewhere at the bottom of it is some kind of fear, and and uh, oh, you fear. know, um, fear. but I don't have it sorted out. But I think I think it's time for me to quit trying to sort it out and figure out why I'm delayed, and to to just do it. So. I'm creating and create. Uh, you don't need me to go through my whole psychological process, but I think I need to make commitments with friends and dates to do things. And one of my friends said, I'll help you put it on the calendar. You have to schedule the time, schedule the time and make a commitment to another person to do it. And then that will pull me through the project, you know, to, to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm voting that you should do it. Just, Thank tell, you. just tell your friend, Ronnie. Oh, I don't think I'm speaking for the gang here. We want you to make another album. We want you to put yeah. that. 
I I appreciate that. I will. Yeah. I will for you, now I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to do it because yeah, you said yeah, that you today. Just, well, yeah. you're you're out out under pressure. You just tipped me over. You tipped me over. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that if I didn't think you had. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm kidding. I appreciate it. I, I, the songs are important to me. I have, it's a. Um, How many do you have that you think will be on the album? Do you have? Uh, I, the, How do they get a, caught? Here's the question. Yeah, I know how prolific you are. But how do you say, well, this child is going to have to wait for another uh, venue? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I, I it's theme based, sort. It's it's really kind of a, a secular spirituality collection. So things, um, and I think it's going to be titled "Regard with Grace" is the title of it. Oh, because uh, I have a song about that, and there's a longer story to why that's important. But. Uh, can well, we I'll just please? quickly tell you, Regard with Grace is an anagram for my name, and my and a friend found that for me. My name is Craig Edgar Worth, and he put my name into an anagram solver on the computer, and Regard with Grace is one of the rearrangements of my name. Yes, now, if that something. isn't a message from somewhere more than a dice throw, I, that's that's how I take it that's anyway. That's spooky. So. That's spooky, yeah. Craig. So yeah. I wrote a song with that title, and that's the collection will be... Uh, Again, a non-religious album, but a but kind of spirit-filled about human spirit. So, so so the songs that fit that theme best, about a dozen of them, will will be on that collection. You feel like uh, playing something live? Uh, wow. Yeah, from that, let me think. What like think? Now I gotta think. Yes, I will do. How could I not say yes? Let me think about what that is gonna be now. You hear this okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if this is going to be on it. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. I'll sing a part of it because I don't I don't know which verses. It is amazing. I am amazed. It is amazing. I am amazed. It is amazing. I am amazed. Isn't it amazing? I was young and now I'm old Isn't it amazing My hair is silver, memories gold Isn't it amazing That I was meek and now I'm bold The flame of justice can't grow cold It is amazing I am amazed It is amazing I am amazed it is amazing, I am amazed. That's a that's a part of it. There are other verses and such, and uh, I'm uh, anyway. I've heard you play that before. I've heard that's a that's a living song. I'm not. To, to be honest, I don't know if it's going to be if it's going to be settled to be on that recording. But uh, I want to say something about it. I I sing that and I do a lot of workshops where I invite people to write verses for that, and I, and it's up in the like forty something verses for that song. I bet so, I had them going through my head. Oh, uh, see, that's the <laughs> it's and that's part of that's part of my my ministry with a lowercase M is to. Um, I created that song to remind myself and others that we can choose to be amazed. We don't have to wait for a lightning strike of amazement from something that that comes at us that's big and wonderful. We can look around, uh, take some time out, look around and search for amazement and always find something. And that's part of my my therapy in these times and, and actually all times. So that's what that song's about. It was... Uh, it actually got, it ended up being uh, used for a NASA space mission. Really? <laughs> that um, 
the 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 recent mission to uh, the New Horizons mission to Pluto, and then that went on to Ultima Thule, which is a which is be, a, a Kuiper Belt object beyond Pluto, and um, so I got to sing that song down at um, at Johns Hopkins at at NASA Central for that mission, and um, wow. and I have there's a video somewhere online of the whole mission team uh, singing that song with me, so which is just that was one of the thrills of my lifetime. I bet. <laughs> I didn't write it for that, you know. I wrote it for for my family and myself and my neighbors and strangers, uh, you know. But uh, but that's just a nice thing that came out of that project. Mm. And again, unexpected. Who who knows? Who who you didn't know? You didn't see that coming. John Lovren's got his hand up. Yes, John. Well, I just I just have to say. <clears throat> I, I've been sitting here listening to you and, and having worked with you in all the recordings when you were doing Worth, worth a Minute, I was always in awe how you could uh, just sit down at the chair and come up with a song and quite often he would not not even want to use the teleprompter. We would do that. You know, I remember the number of times we worked on that. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing I wanted to mention, you talked about the tears that you, you've had when you've been talking to your congregation and so forth. That's half, I don't have a congregation, but I watch, I, I watch a lot of news and stuff on the television. And there isn't many days that I don't tear up to mm. just to see what our humanity is going through right now in yeah. so many, many ways. And the, the, the thing that touches my heart mostly is how grateful I am in the situation that I am compared to so many other people. But it is also the relationships of, that I see on television of people helping other people that touches my heart, especially yeah. these first responders and what they're going through in the hospitals and so mm -hmm. I can't imagine it. And the, the last thing I want to mention is music. Mm. When I get depressed, about things, just everything that's going on because it seems overwhelming to me at times, I will put on music and it's always something calming and I'll go down in the basement and I'll just walk around the basement listening to the music. Mm -hmm. When I come back up, I feel so much better and I can sit down at the computer and do something creative and work again. I do that almost every day and wow. it it has has a some kind of a calming effect on me and uh i thank you so much for all you've done for us and listening to your voice and listening to you sing touches my heart too honestly oh. well thank you thank you so much tender-hearted brother I, I appreciate it uh there's you know you you reminded me i don't know i don't know how your time is i there's a song uh there's a relatively new song i I wanted to share at play, some play. Go ahead. next a few things together. When you mentioned the first responders, um, let's see. There's, I'm never more than eight inches away from several instruments. Sorry. <laughs> so here we go. Um, this this one is a uh, you know one of the great challenges for me and and probably for you, but it's is maintaining uh, our ability to find hope especially uh, depending upon what we're tuned into, what's going on in our country, around the world. Uh, so I'm always on a quest quest for amazement, as, as I mentioned earlier, but also on where I find hope and how can I help other people find, uh, find hope of their own, not, not my hope, but something of their own. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, here's a song uh, called Things That Bring Hope. And um, that's uh, just not, that's wrote just a little while ago. My feet in the woodland, my wheels on the stone, the calm and the quiet, the return to home the birds fill the windows the leaves paint the trees all oh, these are some things that bring hope to me 
The sun and its shadows, the sparkling stars, amazement and wonder for all that we are. The promise fulfilled as each dawn comes to be. Oh, these are some things that bring hope to me. Yes, these are some things that bring hope. These are some things that bring hope. These are some things that bring hope to me. Good people gathering virtually Doing their best in such difficulty And the kindness and wisdom Folks shine out to me well, These are some things that bring hope The hum of the helpers Committing their lives in service to others their hearts open wide and the music we sway to divine reverie are oh, these are some things that bring hope to me yes these are some things that bring hope these are some things that bring hope these are some things that bring hope to me Thank you, my friend. I was Thank thinking you. when you were playing that, that I was imagining the human body made up of billions of atoms. Those atoms could be atoms of hope or that we contribute or atoms of despair. You know, we contribute to the body of humanity. You certainly contribute an atom, many, many atoms of hope to the body of humanity, my friend. Well, thank you. I got the, they're sitting beside my atoms of despair, but uh, it's just uh, uh, on on the better days I choose the hope ones, you know. Yeah. I choose let, the hope ones. Yeah. Let them mingle and talk to each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have the gift to be able to share this beautiful music with others. Oh yeah. boy. Uh, as you you know, you had said, John, it, it it's it's just so comforting, and the mind can wander, and just the things you've been singing to us right now have made me look at my life and where I am. And, and when you talked about making the career change at, at 50, the same, I have struggled my whole life wondering what the heck is my purpose? What is it that I'm supposed to do other than be a mom and run my business? And, you know, when I found it, it, it was like, wow, this is it. This is mm. it. And I feel so good. And the pieces are falling together and, and uh, it's just opened a whole new world for me. And now I'm kind of like, wait, 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 my time is getting limited and I have all this work I want to do. <laughs> and so it goes, huh? Sometimes the, the, yeah, the path is so winding and so, so many stepping stones that yeah. I think for some of us anyway, there, there's no way for, I, I like to think anyway, maybe it's rationalization, but that I couldn't have gotten here sooner, that, the, that it's taken all of this wandering, I agree. right? All of this. Uh, even being lost, it's all of that is part of getting here. Absolutely. And there's no shortcut to this. There's no shortcut no. to this, right? And and I wasn't ready 20 years ago yeah. with the knowledge and the life learning that I mm. have now to be mm. where I am. So mm. taking all of those gifts, all those experiences, good and bad, and putting them together to where I am now to help mm. is, is just, you're right. There is no quick way to get there. Mm. You've got to experience life, I mm. feel in order to be able to present our gifts and find out what our gifts are. Yeah. Well said, Wendy. Yep, well I said. agree. And Thank I you. I see you smiling. You have a beautiful <laughs> face. <laughs> you know, crowns are wasted on such a face. <laughs> I think you, I, I bet, I bet you agree too. It's all, it's all those, all that hesitation and all that lostness, all that, uh, 
yeah. that imperfection, all that pain that that you know makes at least in my makes me it informs all of my gifts t today, yeah. and my ability to connect with people in pain is because mm -hmm. I know my own pain. You know, if I, yeah. and and some of that has this hard one over a long period of time, and I can help people. I help. I try to at least walk with people who are lost because I know what it's like to be lost. You know. Mm. Um, so it's all it's all part of it and when i can get to a place or getting to a place that i sometimes stray from it but where i can accept all that is just it's yeah. all in the same bowl of yeah. of uh of being you know all the all those ugly and difficult things along with all the beauty and it's just a i don't mm -hmm. have to deny the other things mm -hmm. to appreciate the beauty you know mm -hmm. I was, uh, this is from left field but uh, <clears throat> when you were saying that and singing that I was thinking of this Persian fable it called uh, It's Ancient, the Watchman story, where it's the middle of the night and the watchman uh, feels like he's being chased. And it's like a metaphor for fear and, and worry. And he, he, it propels him in one direction. And he's also looking for his beloved. And he's running and he's afraid and it's night and he can't see anything. And he gets to this garden wall and he, he climbs up this garden wall, again, possessed by fear. And when, he, and when he jumps down to the other side, there is his beloved. There is his beloved. Well, my friend, um, John, anything we need to do? Our, he's our official timekeeper. Yeah, we have about a one minute left before we need to go to the end. Any final words, my friend? Oh, final words. Uh, just for today. Just, just for today. Thank oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not done yet. I'm not yeah, done yet. Please. Don't bury us. Yeah. Don't bury yeah, us. Yeah. I don't want to make a sensational story by oh, those yeah. really were his final words. No, no, no. <laughs> I would, I'll tell you what. It's one of, uh, I, I am uh, just gratitude. Gratitude for having had the chance to be, this is a very unique recipe, right? Of six human beings on, on, on computers, right? But it's uh, it's it's really been delightful to uh, to be here with you and to to sit with these things a bit and and I always I always learn things about myself when I t get to talk about uh, my experience and even to sing the songs for others. So um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for the attention and the uh, the presence and the opportunity that you have provided me today. Now, uh, one practical thing: uh, Red Grammar is doing the online video things patreon wherever that is called oh yes uh that might be something uh, you might think about these oh, to pay, yeah to, to get to get pup, uh, pup support for your work yeah yeah uh, i i may do that for my new album when i when i when i, yeah. when I make I that commitment. Will be soon though right yeah yeah yes <laughs> yeah i think i i think i may that's i have to let myself do that i'm not very good exactly. at uh asking and accepting uh, such support and i think yeah. it's important to for myself and for others to to be generous by le letting people on board so sure. that's how i'm starting to look at it so please anyway do this. please do this yeah. yeah thank you you're not in it alone you know you're, you know well i am saying this is a the, the hour is flown by as usual and it's been nice to take this flight with you all thank you <laughs> And Captain Lovering over there is steering the plane. Are we going to land here, Captain Lovering? We're, we're, going, we're going to the final screen. And I, I thank uh, Craig from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And well, thank, we'll thank you, John. You thank you, Pamela. Again. Thank you, Wendy. Oh, the pleasure you, to meet you, Craig. Oh, Wonderful. Looking forward to staying in touch. Yeah. Oh, me too. Absolutely.